everyone. Welcome back to Lisa's Love and Light. Thank you all for being here today. Oh, guys, it's been one crazy day. You know, normally I come on earlier, but like I said to you guys, I can't promise exactly what time I can show up because of my schedule. And today was one of those hectic days. But like I said, you know, I am determined to be here to um, talk and discuss healing and, you know, just, just let this be a safe space for you. Let this be a place of safety here where you can listen to messages and whatever resonate, you take it and you run with it. You know, you take the information and if it resonates with you, you apply it to your circumstances and situations. And we're never here to judge anyone. This is a judge-free zone where everyone is welcome and we can talk as long as we're uplifting others and we're not in a comment category judging people or anything like that. Everything on this channel is about encouraging others and to uplift others, especially when we're dealing with grief, people and depression and drama and trauma and all of that other stuff associated with it. It's very important. And um, before I get into the topic of discussion, I hope everyone had a great day and thank you all for your support and for sharing these videos and for showing up here. I really appreciate this. And um, also before I get into the topic of discussion, Monday will be the anniversary of my mother's passing and she passed away four years ago, uh, four years ago on April 15th during the shutdown. And today I, I couldn't be here earlier. I had a um, doctor's appointment and it took longer than um, I expected. And then by the time I did the things I needed to do, it was time for me to go back to work. But, you know, I'm still having a hard time with it because I was talking to my doctor about it and I just broke down and started crying. It's so difficult. You know, anyone who's in that situation where you've lost both parents, you know, um, let me back up a little bit. I lost my dad two years before I had my son. And I would have loved for him to be here so that my son would have known his grandfather you know, because he would have brought something to his life, added something. But um, that was very difficult for me, too. But my mom, losing my mom was, was really bad, guys. And I still feel the void every day of my life. So when I talk about we can get through it, what, you know, I know we can never get over it because that void will always be there because, you know, our parents are no longer here for those who are in this situation. And you fill that void every day of your life, but you can get through it by sharing memories, you know, of your parents and, and what they brought to your life. And not just for those who lost parents, but people who lost spouse, children. You know, everyone is welcome here, you know, because we all can learn something from healing these pains and griefs within us, you know. So, and I also want everyone to know, you know, I want to welcome any newcomers. Thank you for being here and know this, that I am not a therapist or a social worker. I don't have certification in that category, you know, um, and I don't have a degree in that category. However, I speak from my own personal experiences so that I can help other people. And, and those who are listening, please take what resonates with you and use that in your life if it's effective and it's helping you. You know, we're here to uplift and help. So um, that's what I have to say. And it, Monday, you know, Sunday or Monday of this coming weekend is going to be hard for me. So I'm trying to think about some things that I can do to help me to get through it, you know, because the reality of it is really setting in, you know, it took a while for me to just say she's not here anymore, you know, because my mother meant a lot to me. But anyway, um, the topic of discussion today is what is your deal breaker? 
what is your deal breaker, people? Everything that I talk about on this platform is connecting all the dots that right back to healing, grief, you know, uh, talking about grief, healing, and self-care and self-love. All of these things are like the dots being connected. So tune in. What is your deal breaker? Tell me in a comment category what your deal breaker is. We're going to get into that today. Today we're going to talk about why it's important to establish and develop boundaries and deal breakers, especially on this uh, healing journey. As you start to realize you need to heal some hurts and some trauma and grief, why is it important to set boundaries? and talk about deal breakers so boundaries i have some notes very little notes though why are they so important especially when you're on this journey to hill why do you guys think boundaries are so important i can't speak from anyone else's perspective, but from my own personal experiences with um, boundaries, I never really set them before I started healing because I was a person who was subservient and codependent to others, like a genie in a bottle, your wish is my command, so to speak, just being so subservient to other people, letting people take advantage, let them walk over me, you know, I would say how I felt and my voice would just go on deaf ears, you know, and I would just cry about things and didn't know how to uh, set boundaries until I started the process of doing therapy, you know, having a therapist and talking about these things that bother me and having him listen and really hear, you know, the pain I was experiencing from all of this. Boundaries was very important to me as I got on this healing journey. And what changed my life forever, guys, is just losing people during a shutdown. You know, I, I talked about besides my mother and dog losing 10 people, just death after death after death. It made me realize that we are all on borrowed time and tomorrow isn't promised to any of us. And because of the losses, it changed my life forever and it made me look at my own self you know what was going on in my life and it wasn't easy so boundaries to me had to be um set it had to be established because people were just doing the most and the worst and really during the shutdown the mask came off and i started to see people's true colors and and how they really felt about me and i had to make some changes and the changes were not easy you know, I had to keep on and on. Remember, guys, every time, not every time, but I always a lot emphasize people come into our life for a reason, a season, a lifetime or a lesson. And in my case, I had to learn lessons and I wasn't learning them. I was riding that wheel over and over again. And I had to lay these things to rest. And if I didn't learn the lessons, then I wasn't going to ever get off that wheel and I was going to spend on these lessons. And remember when they come back uh, a second and third time around, it may be a different situation. The characters and in, in to play may be different, but it's the same lesson. Excuse me. It's the same lesson. And what happens with that is this worse than ever. And I had to find ways to set boundaries to get people to understand that this toxicity that they're bringing to the table, I'm no longer um, accepting or being subservient to it. So boundaries for me on this healing journey was very important. It was important. And as I start to set them, people would just be dismissive of me, you know, yeah, yeah, whatever, et cetera. And I had to reiterate, you know, emphasize again and again. And then after I saw that certain people, it was just never going to change, then that's when I had to say, okay, cut off, block, and delete. That was my resolution to the situation because if 
you know, a person is not respecting the boundaries that you are setting. And I'm telling them why these boundaries have to be established. I can no longer allow toxicity into my life. I can no longer allow you to talk to me like I'm not an individual. I can no longer hand over my power to you because that's what it means to me as, as well, people, that when I allow myself to be subservient and codependent on other people, they take the control over my life. Tell me what to do. You know, nobody has a right to play God in your life, you know, and setting those boundaries meant that I was taking back my power and people were, you know, it was like a power struggle back and forth to the point where I had to cut off, block and delete, you know, and people were not taking me seriously. It's like, girl, please. And then when they start to see the action behind it and that I meant business, and it took me a while to get there because I, you know why guys, I had to learn how to love me. And I had to first learn that I was just as important as everybody else and not them above me. And I'm down here, you know, and I had, and it took time because that's what the healing journey is to look at ourselves, to look at what's wrong. Like you go to a doctor, right? And they look and see if you have any health issues or this and that. And if you do, okay, we're going to fix it with this, with this medication or with this situation. That's the same thing when it comes to our physical and mental health. You know, we have to look at the bigger picture, uh, at the hurts and the pains. And then we got to figure out a way to get through it, to, you know, fix it so that we can, you know, be better and do better. Because if our mental and physical health is messed up and, we don't fix it, then we can't help ourselves. We can't help anyone else. So we have to prioritize that. That's so important. And to me, like taking back my power was everything. And when those boundaries were being crossed, I just shut the person out of my life or the individuals, whatever the situation was. I made my exit and I left it there. And I don't try to go back to the past to try to do whatever because everything about me that I've done was to um, try to fix it. But it takes, you know, everybody has to be on board for that. So boundaries for me was taking back my power, you know, and it's important as you get on this journey to heal and you're very serious about this journey, you have to persevere through all the um, stuff, you know, the toxicity, the, the grief, the pain. And if you are also trying to get through grief of losing loved ones besides traumatic experiences, then you definitely don't want to add any toxicity to your plate. Your plate is full and you need to heal those um, wounds. And you can't heal if you got people dropping toxicity in your lap. You're not going to heal. It's just going to add to the wound. It's like an open wound and somebody pours some salt in it. You can't expect that to heal. So that was another thing I had to learn. That it was important for me to close the door if the boundaries kept being crossed. And it was hard, but then at, you know, when I started to put this into action over and over, it became easier. Um, so it is important to set boundaries as we move along this journey because it's going to help us with our healing and, and to give you peace. Because if you always have drama at your front door and, and some negativity and toxicity going on, it's, it's going to be almost impossible to heal. So I had to get rid of as much toxicity off my plate as possible. You know, we may not be able to get rid of every um, bit of it, but most of it so that we can stay in a place of being focused on our healing. Um, so let's talk about what deal breakers are, what a deal breaker is. I'm pretty sure most of you know what that is. A deal breaker is when you reach a point in a situation, whether it's a personal relationship, a business setting, or a, or a family matter, or any situation in your life that you've reached the end of the road meaning that you try to um, re resolve issues within those situations and you feel like a needle on a broken record. That's, you're not being heard. 
there is no compromise, there is no resolution, and you're spinning on a wheel, a needle on a broken record, and now you decide, okay, it's time for me to make my exit. That's what a deal breaker is to me. You know, and when we talk about relationships, for example, you know, a relationship to me is two people coming together. You know, what you know, we all gonna have some differences and then we're gonna have some similarities, but coming together, two people to enhance a relationship is to enhance my life, not to bring hell to it. You know, we all have problems, we all have something that we're working on. And I'm not talking about stupid arguments or somebody being in a bad mood, but just people who are coming to bring hell and toxicity. That's not a relationship to me. You know, that's just adding, you know, toxicity to my life. So a relationship to me is supposed to enhance it where we complement one another, you know, and, and um, where I fall, you know, that person is, how do we, how do you say that guys? Um, you know, where I may not be strong, that person is, has strength in that area and vice versa, something like that. But it's supposed to enhance our life. And it's important. And then when it comes to a point where it doesn't do that and it's toxic and it's adding grief and more stress to our life and we try to compromise, we try to, you know, uh, resolve it and it's at the point where it's, it's too much, then that's where it becomes a deal breaker. And certain things are a deal breaker to me. Let me tell you what one thing is that really is a deal breaker to me is when a person cannot keep their word. And like if a person, I'm not talking about someone gets sick or they can't do something, but someone tells you that they're going to do something. And it's very important whether it's a relationship, a business setting, a business setting, or whatever situation it is, family matter, et cetera. And that person is supposed to, you know, do A, B, C, and D. And they tell you, and you have conversations with them about something. Oh, yes, I'm going to do A, B, C, and D, right? And that person uh, renege on it, and they don't have a valid reason to do so. They're just not going to keep their word. Any situation where a person does not keep their word is, to me, a person who has no honor. Because your word, you know, how I grew up, your word is supposed to be everything, your character, everything. And you have, to me, a person who don't keep their word and they just, you know, do the opposite of what they say they're going to do. They have no honor to me. And once they don't have that, there's no trust anymore, whether it's a personal relationship, whether it's a business situation, family setting, you know, because that person is showing me who they are. And I'm not talking about, well, I couldn't keep my word because I got sick. I ended up in the hospital. I'm not talking about anything like that. They just promised you and told you A, B, C, and D, and they just didn't feel like doing it, you know? And to me, that's a deal breaker. You know, a relationship where, um, you know, to me, where we are supposed to, you know, see each other. You know, lies to me. Let me put it like this. Lies. You know, just blatant lying and, 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 and cheating and stuff like that. But lies. Because to me, when a person constantly is a pathological liar, they can't be trusted. They have no honor. So they have nothing of value to give um, to any relationship to me, you know, whether it's a personal business setting, family, whatever, because they cannot be trusted. And once I lose trust, that it's a deal breaker to me, you know? So guys, in a comic category, tell me what your deal breaker is, because people have that, you know? Um, and when you're on this journey to heal, it's important to, to set boundaries. It's important to, because um, as you heal, you start to self-care and, and, and the end result is self-love and inner peace. Now, if you have um, toxicity in your life, a, a whole lot of it, you know, then it's almost 
difficult to heal and get to a place of self-care and self-love and inner peace. You know, inner peace is where you refuse to have toxicity, you know? And to me, inner peace is where I can spend time to myself and enjoy my own company. Because people, if you don't love yourself, what do you have to give to anybody else? If you don't love just spending time sometimes by yourself. You know, I had a, a friend a while ago who hated being alone with herself. You know, and I didn't understand that. Uh, she would hate when her husband would have to go on these trips or her kids were out of the house or whatever. She hated being to herself. And to me, you know, if I had, you know, if I was married and had, you know, I do have a kid, but he's an adult and I had kids, I would love that me time, you know, but this person didn't. She just did not want to be alone. And that's something that is important because if you don't love you, how are you going to give love to somebody else? And how, more importantly, how do you expect that person to love you if you don't even love or value yourself? And it's important to get to that point, you know, because as you love you, you're going to naturally take care of yourself, self-care. Like the things I do today as I start to heal, and I know I'm healing because drinking tea, people, I love coffee, you know, and I love... And I drink just tea, um, different types of teas. So like I would drink um, chamomile tea because it's calming at night. And during the day, I may drink some immune support tea and things like that. Keeping my doctor appointments, which is important to me. You know, working out at the gym, you know, watching what I eat. I didn't do those things like I do today. It was like, yeah, yeah you know, I'll get to it. But as I started to heal those hurts in me, and I started to see all these deaths back in 2020, it changed my life in ways I can't even explain. It changed me. And it changed my perspective on how I looked at life. Because the people who really love me and valued me are no longer here. Excuse me. Uh, I have sinuses today. Uh, but anyway, they're no longer here. They are gone. And it changed my life in ways that I can't even uh, explain. But it made me look at my own life and what I had to do, you know. And it's important, people, it's important for our physical and mental health to be taken care of. Because without that, we can't take care of ourselves or anyone else or anything around us. So it's important. So healing, staying on a healing journey, it's not going to be easy. It's a lot of work. And there's going to be days we don't feel like doing anything because we feel depressed, we feel hurt, or whatever it is. But we're going to have those days. And it's okay because we're human. You know, I make mistakes all the time. But, you know, if I fall down, I'm getting right back up. You know, and it's important that we keep going. We bite through, we crawl, we chew through it. You know, because as we continue and continue, then we're going to start to see that things are getting better. And it's going to be maybe a slow, maybe slow, but it's happening. You know, nothing ventured is nothing gained. Keep moving forward. And as I say in prior videos, when you get up in the morning, thank God for letting you see another day. And then look in the mirror and say that, you know, tell yourself you love yourself. You deserve the best, you know, and never allow yourself to settle. You know, like I said in a, another video, my English teacher wrote in my high school yearbook, Lisa, never sell yourself short, you know, and to me, it means never to settle, you know, for anything. And that's what I was doing in the past, settling just to have people in my life so that I didn't have to be alone. But now because I love me, I see things from a different perspective. I take care of myself. I value myself. And I don't, you know, just less, how, how do I say this, lessen myself just to have anybody around me. You know, I, I'm still doing work. It's not easy, but I know I'm worth it. You know, and it's important that we value our, ourselves and know that we're worth it. And it takes time to start working on ourselves and healing those wounds. But never be ashamed of it. 
Never allow yourself to stay in a place of, de of depression and, and, and feel despair or hopelessness. You know, that, never allow that, you know. And, and as a human being, you know, it, it, we fall short. We make mistakes, things happen. But get right back up and, and persevere through it, you know. And uh, come to this channel. Let's talk about it, you know. And if it resonates with you, you know, take what does and, and, and run with it and, and apply it to your own situation. And also tell other people about this channel, you know, so that they don't have to feel like they're in this alone. Because there's plenty of us who are going through the same things or similar things. And also, most of all, get connected with a therapist. Google a therapist in the state that you live, you know, and find one that you vibe with. That's the starting point. You know, and a, and a second um, place that you can start is bereavement group, groups, uh, grief bereavement groups, because you're going to hear stories of other people who are in similar situations, you know, the pain and the grief and how they get through it. Music helps a lot. Put on a playlist of music, you know, uh, because that's going to help change your mood, uplifting music. You know, do things that help you get out of that, you know, space of depression. Just make sure you don't stay in it too long. And learn to do things uh, where you have me time on a daily basis, even if it's an hour to yourself, to do things to take care of yourself, you know, bubble bath, some music, whatever you want to do, do during that me time. Just make sure that you make time for yourself. That's important because it's part of your self-care and it's part of your healing. That's the message today, guys. Uh, I will be back tomorrow. I'm not sure what time, but subscribe to the channel so you can get a notification as to when I'm on here live and you can join, you can join me. And also... Um, hit that like button. Tell other people about this channel so that they can show up here as well, especially those who need to hear the message. Thank you guys once again. Have a good evening and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Always uplifting you and encouraging you. This is Lisa shedding love and light. Bye guys. I'll see you tomorrow. I have to go eat something. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye.